Okay, we're back with another one. I guess what's next is Sean Strickland and Hamza Shemayev. I just want to say this. Kamaru, like, it could have been a draw. Kamaru definitely lost that first round. And then the last two rounds, man, I think Kamaru definitely did more on the feet. I know Hamza got that one takedown at the end, but he didn't do nothing with it, and he still lost it. He didn't him. have to do nothing with it. It's a takedown. We talking about the UFC. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, a but takedown I, means a lot. A takedown is damn near a 10-8. I know. The way they scored. But the thing is, I feel like if Kamaru had believed in himself a little bit more, he probably could have won that fight. Because I think that after the first round, he kind of realized... That was the best Hamza could do. He wasted a lot of energy too being on the bottom. But you're coming up in weight against somebody who naturally is a middleweight and they're dropping down. I'm saying if he would have been able to stuff some takedowns, he would have had a little bit more energy. Well, you also got to realize the size advantage he was giving up as far as the weight class and stuff. And he was taken down more times in this fight in his whole career. He went up a weight class. What do you mean? Hamza couldn't even make what's away in his last fight. We got to remember that too now. But I will say this. As far as the fight with Sean Strickland and Hamza, I ain't gonna hold you. Sean might got a good chance of beating Hamza. I don't know about that. With two more rounds, Kamaru probably would have finished. Sean, can Sean survive though? Yeah, more than likely he can. You gotta understand Usman survived, but that's Usman. We seen Leon Edwards controlling Usman on the ground too. You gotta understand anybody else, Leon Edwards probably could have submitted. I think this Sean Strickland and Hamza fight is closer than we ever thought it would be. And this is the second right. time, this is the second time where Hamza done got by. Because a lot of people feel like Gilbert didn't beat him. Now, people saying Kamaru won, that's definitely a stretch. We got to really chill out with that. I can see it being a draw. And look at how close they scored it. They literally almost scored it almost as a draw. The scoring was pretty good, surprisingly, in Abu Dhabi. You know, message. Message. But <laughs> I'm going to put it to you like this. Anybody who can get out of round one with Hamza, they might got a chance of beating him. And the reason why it lines up perfectly with Sean is because this is the first time where if Hamza don't finish his opponent in the first round, he got four more rounds, not just two where he can barely skate by. He got four more rounds. That's if they survived. But they've been surviving. Other than Kevin Holland, Gilbert, Gilbert made it. We can't compare Sean Strickland's ground game to Gilbert. We can't compare his ground game to who's been. We've seen Gilbert on the ground more than we've seen Sean Strickland. Who took him down? Man, Gilbert been on his back a few times. Let's not pretend. He's probably from punches, but not from grappling. Man, he been on his back. Sean don't be on the ground like that. Other than Kamaru had him like that. But I'm saying this fight is closer. I'm not saying Sean gonna beat him. And the reality is Kamaru took it on short notice. A full training camp, he might not have got to take it down, bro. He might not have. That's the only issue with taking this fight on short notice, man. There's more questions to answer. And that's the thing with Hamza. We still... And then we already know who probably wasn't 100%. That's why I really didn't like this fight. Because I'm saying if Hamza, Shamaya, if he would have fought Paulo Costa, it would have been way bro, more... This fight gonna look like... This gonna look like your boy Magomedov. What Strickland did to Abus... I wanna say this. 90% of people can't get past that first round with Hamza. Make no mistake about it. Hold on. Sean could very well be in that 90% where it could just be overwhelming. Because it looked like he could have submitted or TKO Usman. But I'm saying if Sean Strickland can get out of round one, which he might can... Sean Strickland has a better chance. And I know at any point talking about Izzy right now. But I'm saying if Israel Adesanya was champion, he would have had no chance against Hamza. Zero chance. It would look like Kevin Holland. It really would have. You know what I'm saying? But Sean Strickland has a better chance than if Israel was champion. You know, so I mean, it's kind of unfortunate for Hamza. It's kind of good for Izzy, though, because now he gets to sit back and watch how things unfold. Well, Sean Strickland saying he don't want to fight Hamza, though. Yeah, he beat Kevin he Holland at welterweight when you miss weight in the first place and you was overweight and you had to fight at a catchweight. But it's not his fault that Paulo Costa pulled out, though. No, but we talking about Kevin Holland first. You miss weight when you was fighting Nate Diaz, a lightweight, who was going up to welterweight, who historically has done terrible at welterweight. Even Dong Hyun Kim, the brother Nate Diaz at welterweight. So what do you think Hamza was going to do? Let's be real. And you need to make way for that fight. Hamza doing the same thing. He's fighting these guys, bro, like, who's not really in the top five, not in the top ten. But people call him out for it. But then when Sean O'Malley did it, then it's... I'm not really following your logic. I'm not going to lot to you. But I'm saying Sean O'Malley, he got a, a title shot without really beating nobody in the top five other than Piotr Young. But he would have beat those people. If he did that to Aljo, what everybody. what would he have done to Ricky Simone? The same thing with Kamsa. What if Kamsa fight Sean Strickland and just go right there and ragdoll him? Well, I will tell you this. I would say stylistically, there's a bunch of middleweights that are terrible stylistically matchups against Hamza. I mean, and you don't like to hear this, bro. But Marvin Vittori, stylistically, you can say stop, dude, but listen to what I'm saying. Stylistically, he's not taking down Marvin. Yes, he is. 
No, he's not. When have Marvin been on his back? You can't even give me a fight when he was on his back. When did he fought somebody like Comstock? It don't matter, bro. Marvin ain't somebody you just take down a whole now. Jared Cannonier. He never fought nobody on the same level. Jared Cannonier. Well, we can't hold on. We can't compare Comstock fighting these people, bro, who don't have the same level of ground game as Comstock. Kevin Holland, you know what I mean? Like, come on, man. Like, I'm not, I'm not defending Kevin Holland. You throwing him in there? I'm talking about Marvin Vittori. No, no, I'm saying Kevin Holland fought Marvin. He fought other people too. So we can't ignore that. He cannot take down Bob Couture. Jared Cannonier is a stylistic nightmare for Hamza. Let's keep it a stack. But Jared looked like he was lost at sea when he fought for the title. Wilson! Wilson! He got some work to do. And then Paulo Costa would have been a great test. But the thing is, Paulo, even if he fought, he would have been injured. And then with that elbow, he was going to be getting taken down all night. But I will say this. Really? Robert would have been a nightmare for Hamza up until he fought Drikas. And the reality is, Drikas might be a stylistic nightmare for Hamza too. Man, I'm telling you, Drikas might have his belt at the end of this. I'm gonna just be honest with you. The opportunities there. It's a lot of opportunities. The middleweight belt might be changing the hands a few times. 